Hi, everybody. Welcome to another week in Pensado's Place. He's Dave Pensado. I'm Herb Trawick. And you're going to meet a wonderful lady from YouTube named Lindsay Rothschild. And we're going to delve down the path of how you can use this platform in a better way. But first, if you're thinking about a career choice in schools, consider the live business. It's got all the sexy stuff, great pay, travel, travel the globe, actually, cutting-edge technology, bunch of fun, meet a bunch of celebrities, and you'll actually hear your work, and thousands will hear your work. The best school in the business for that stuff? is the Blackbird Academy, you better believe it. Um, the founder of the Academy still goes out and does live stuff. They actually do it for a living. And they've got openings for their live classes in January and in April. Check it out for yourself. Go to the blackbirdacademy.com and peruse that website or email directly to karma at the blackbirdacademy.com for any info that you need. Tell them we sent you. Um, in addition, as always, sign up for our newsletter, like and subscribe, and click notify right here, and we thank you for that. A little bit of a different approach to this week's ITL, a number of things have happened in Southern California. Even as we tape this show, we're in the midst of the worst fires in California's history. Uh, there was a mass shooting in Thousand Oaks that then later got hit by the fire. A lot of people we know, a lot of people that you know that you've met through the show have been affected by the fire. Some of us live close to it. And when you live close to it or you've had to experience it, and God forbid you ever have to experience it, one of the things you notice is that there's an amazing set of sounds that come at you constantly, whether it's through the coverage or when you're listening at your window or in your car. And we decided to put together a montage of those sounds so that you could get some sort of feel for what this thing is, is like. Um, we just thought it was audio interesting. So this week's ITL is Soundtrack of an Inferno. seen anything like this before ever it's snowing ash and everything you're looking at has been burned every last bit of it I'm Steve Patterson in Paradise, California, where nearly the entire town has been incinerated by towering flames. This is what's left in the wake of terrified residents trying to escape, a sight we've seen all over town. The fire took everything. The campfire destroying all of it. In Paradise, blocks gutted, 29 dead, hundreds missing, whole neighborhoods reduced to ruins. The lethal Santa Ana winds are returning to Southern California firefighters working round the clock trying to dampen down smoldering land that's threatening to reignite. The Woolsey fire has claimed at least two lives. Thousands are still evacuated with many coming to grips with their loss. These wildfires have been dynamic and dangerous, destroying entire communities like this one in Bell Canyon. And with those winds expected to pick, up, pick back up, we could see even more destruction. Holy shit. Wow. All right. Got part. You have a fast moving fire front that's coming your way, so just be heads up. Please, God, please let me out of here. Please, God. Please. Oh, my God. 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 What am I doing? Oh, my God. She's a songwriter and publisher relations lead at YouTube. As we said, she's a favorite of ours. She's done our award shows. She is the one, the only Lindsay Rothschild. Welcome. Thank you Hi, so much. How are you? Such a pleasure to be here. Same here. Um, one of the things as we got to know you, I think we met at our when we went up to Google's headquarters we a did. couple years back, yep. right? And um, Lindsay has engaged with us. And we've learned a lot. And we thought you should learn a lot. Mm -hmm. Talk about what you do specifically. So 
My main goal is to help make songwriters and producers discoverable, engineers included, mm -hmm. the, whole, the whole line. Thank you for um, that. Yes. Uh, so one of the main things I'm working on is through our product, and I know we're going to talk a lot about that today. Um, we also do a lot of events at our YouTube spaces and our pop-up spaces to spotlight writers and producers. Uh, and also we do a lot with the community to help demystify YouTube from the rights management side, but also how to engage with the platform creatively mm -hmm. from our side of the music industry. Mm -hmm. And that's why we thought it was important, and thank you for doing the show, because I think there's a lot of questions that people have. Mm -hmm. um, and I think as there's more services and platforms and streaming and all kinds of stuff, it gets more confusing. So, um, and what we noticed was how aggressively YouTube's initiatives were about engaging with songwriters and creative people. So we've done mm -hmm. events in Nashville with you. We've talked about doing other things. We're talking about maybe doing something in your lobby at the YouTube oh, LA yeah. space. It's all awards. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, but what we liked is how engaged you were. Has that been an initiative from the beginning? Is there? It feels really serious to YouTube that that relationship be cemented. Is that true? Yeah. I mean, we. You know, we've worked with music publishing partners for a very long time, and we, of course, have, you know, whole global artist teams, global label teams, global publishing teams. But on the publishing side, you know, years back, it was, there was more of a focus on the business side. Mm -hmm. And something I'm very passionate about is the focus on the creative side with publishing. So that's a little more obvious with an artist who is commercially facing and very much trying to be in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. With writers, producers, engineers, it's more about discoverability. Mm -hmm. And that's been a huge issue just in the digital age in general. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that you know there are a lot of solutions starting to pre present themselves. It's early um, and there's you know, I think that we're going to see a lot of movement in this space from all the digital service providers, and we already are starting to. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm excited about what we're working on at YouTube. What, 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 when you say, I don't understand how you're helping the publishers. So is it just notoriety or do more money or what? How's that? So before, you know, Ongoing, we're always working with our publishing partners mm -hmm. on their making sure that their copyright is represented on the yeah, platform. You do a good job of it. Yeah, when thank you. When someone, you know, when, when a fan uploads content or when music is uploaded in a video, we have a tool called Content ID, and that's scanning every single video that's uploaded to the platform. And we've got over 400 hours of video uploaded every minute. It's an insane wow. scale. Um, and it's always scanning for copyright use. And audio fingerprints, video fingerprints, and melody fingerprints, which is actually very unique to YouTube. So mm -hmm. even if someone's uploading a cover, it's going to scan, identify that melody use, and that is claimed by the publisher in this yeah. example mm -hmm. um, and, and paid out accordingly to the writers. So, How did the new uh, rights, um, what do you call it, music rights holders law? What the, well, I forget the name the of the MMA. new law. Yeah, how does, yeah. That, how does that affect YouTube and how does that affect you? Yeah, so I think the entire industry is very excited about the MMA. Um, it was a needed change. Uh, something that you know we're all excited about is the Mechanical Licensing Collective. Um, hopefully we'll really streamline where all of these rights are held and, and how DSPs will pull from them in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're, we're excited about it along with everybody else. Well, long overdue, people get paid For better sure. now. Yeah. Um, and I think part of what is interesting is that it takes champions to champion the kind of unvarnished. It's easy to champion the stars. It's harder to champion those people who can go sure. by underneath the radar, which sometimes can be part of our audience. Uh, when you, one of the things that I've noticed and I've been involved with with you a little bit is the curation of people's channels and stuff like that. How does that process work? We've had some friends that uh, we work with together. That, yeah. So how does that process this work? This is probably my favorite things to work on. Uh, so I've been sitting down primarily this year um, in 2018 with songwriters, producers, engineers, and helping them curate their work mm -hmm. under a playlist on their channel. So essentially anybody can create a channel um, and create a playlist of say, songs they wrote, or we've seen, you know, visual discography, or songwriting and production credits, or songs I engineered, you get the idea. Mm -hmm. 
creating a playlist of all of that mm -hmm. and showcasing it on the homepage of your channel. Um, Shane McNally d has a very cool um, way that he interpreted this, showing songs I wrote, showing artists I've produced, and then highlights in his catalog. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of flexibility with that, whether it's you know, calling out and controlling how it looks for your number ones, let's say, the things you want to highlight when somebody goes to see your discography. Mm -hmm. You can include your bio in the About page. You can customize the channel so that it's youtube.com slash Evan Kid Bogart, and it's v this very clean experience mm -hmm. for a fan, for a potential collaborator to click through, see the things you want to highlight, see potential public speaking opportunities or awards you've accepted mm -hmm. uh, and, and your collaborators. Mm -hmm. So I've been there um, as you've helped people that you'll give them a tour of YouTube LA and then you'll sit down right in the lobby and um, I know one of our favorites is James Fauntleroy, right? Yeah. How did he approach curating his channel? Yeah, that was, that was definitely a, a highlight and um, he built his pretty early on. He mm -hmm. jumped in, blew me away with what, how he organized his, but showcases his visual discography. He also calls out songs where he's a featured artist. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can, like, there's a bunch of songs in there that you wouldn't even know his vocals are on. Mm -hmm. um, and then he calls out his collaborators as well. So it's very cool. And I know he's got, you know, new music coming out. He's, um, or he already does. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll be a cool, uh, it'll be interesting to see the evolution of his channel where he can spotlight both the artist work as well as all of his writer and producer credits. Okay, cool. Very, very, very cool. Um, and for people who are not James or Justin or Shane or Evan, how does curating a channel work for them? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think that that's a really unique thing about YouTube in general. So, you know, of course, if you have a bunch of cuts and a discography that you want to showcase, that's a, a no-brainer to pull together a playlist of your work. Um, and even if you have one or two you want to highlight, you can do that in, you know, bigger video form. Um, but say you're more, you know, you're just getting started uh, and you have, maybe you've worked with a few notable names and you want to call out, similar to how Shane did artists I've produced, you could call out, you know, in the studio with, or different variations on who you're working with currently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and on top of that, you could build out uh, songs I'm inspired by, or mm -hmm. I've seen I've seen examples of songs I wish I wrote, but just some window into who you are. And mm -hmm. as you're developing uh, your portfolio, you are searchable and discoverable on a global platform. And, and that's the goal, right? Yeah. Discoverability is Absolutely. part of the goal, increased views and so on and so forth. Um, very key for something that has just become part of our life and and knowing how to, how to utilize that it becomes critical. Are there other best practices that people should just, who post to YouTube should be aware of? Yeah, there's a few. Um, so I, the playlisting, we've kind of talked about it already, but I'll emphasize it again because I think playlist is helpful not only if you're curating content mm -hmm. um, of from other people's channels, but also if you're to curate content from your own channel. So um, a lot of times you'll see on a YouTube channel, the default playlist is just your uploads, mm -hmm. which is great. I mean, it's good to have your uploads right there, but one step above that would be to categorize. So are these your official videos, are these the behind the scenes or, you know, writing the song, mm -hmm. is this a video blog? Just creating categories through playlists really helps fans understand what they're looking at mm -hmm. versus one playlist of all of the uploads mm -hmm. that are, you know, mixed and matched. And that also gives a lot more flexibility to the type of content you're uploading to your channel yeah. as an artist or musician because there isn't the pressure to always be creating this official video that's highly produced. Mm -hmm. You can, of course, have those as your you know tentpole moments in a year, but what about all the supporting content? Mm -hmm. That, you know, a YouTube fan is is so engaged and leaned in and kind of wants to know the whole journey, not just the one official video. Mm -hmm. um, so because of playlisting and categorization, you can really create a cleaner experience on your homepage and still spotlight the mm -hmm. official videos you want to spotlight, mm -hmm. but then add other elements behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Are there are there um, are there any types of videos or are there any techniques that tend to uh, produce better results than others? Do, does YouTube care about exactly what type of video it is, or the length of the video, or the content of the video? I wouldn't say 
YouTube cares. I would say it's more about your your subscriber base. So there are you know tons of analytics on YouTube channels that when you log in, you can you know click to your creator studio and see the fan engagement, see where people are watching from, whether it's you know their mobile device or or desktop. Um, you can see how long they're engaging with your videos. So that's a really nice way to find out, you know, oh, I'm creating these 10 minute videos and maybe I'm losing people five minutes in and you can start evolving your content to your fan base or a certain type of video, maybe a tutorial or um, a behind the scenes mm -hmm. like spikes and maybe you do more of that. You can really start learning from your fan base. Do you take requests for like more little kitten videos? <laughs> Are you are well, you thinking like, one up? Or are you yeah, I like that one that goes like, <laughs> I like that. Is, is, is that your cute. rendition of a kitten? <laughs> yeah, you see the, the guy's little what, what kitten. Kind of, the little, little goes, black yeah. and white. Yeah, yeah she, she knows yeah, it. She I knows know. it. Oh, no, I'm, I'm so clear if she I were, does. So if I were to curate it, new to I me. could put that in mine, in my uh, channel, right? Yeah, as your favorite video? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And who would get paid for that? Well, the cat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The cat. Might not put that one in my sin. <laughs> well, if, if that's you doing the cat. Go for that frisky endorsement. Maybe. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, on the live event stuff that yeah. you guys do. Um, and we've done... So it's it's amazing if you guys get a chance to go attend. They literally transform a space. And from the ones that we're aware of between creators creating music on the spot, between bringing you people to you can learn from or get engaged with. You get like really cool YouTube stuff. Like we, there were pillows, pillows. and stuff like that. For <laughs> all of our, it's so sad, all the Pensado decor for when everybody's home is full of YouTube pillows that we took. And we didn't get arrested. I've that, seen that YouTube socks, tube socks. I've seen all kinds of... What's the philosophy beside the live events? What kind of cities do you choose? Give us the give us the rundown. Yeah, so I'd actually love to explain YouTube spaces in general Please. to anyone that isn't familiar, but we have 11 spaces around the world, uh, and they're production studios. So... First and foremost, production studios. There's tons of black box stages. Sometimes we'll do ready sets where you can come in. One of my favorite examples was during the elections. We set up a whole Oval Office set in one of the stages. And um, how it works is once you hit a certain subscriber count, you unlock the space. You being a company, a creator, an artist, a, you know, any channel that's hit that milestone. And... Essentially, you take an online tu uh, tutorial of how to use the space, and then you book stages on your own. It's a self-sufficient tool. You come in, uh, use the stages for free, use the equipment, cameras, lighting, microphones, all of it's free, um, and all you do is, is bring in your crew mm -hmm. and or a tripod, mm -hmm. um, and you can make you know amazing content. What's, what's the number of subscribers that are needed? Uh, I believe it changes around the world, but I believe 10,000 is kind of Somewhere the sweet spot. Area. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so on top of having production studios, there's also edit suites. So even if you didn't film your content there, you can come in and use one of the edit suites to do all your post-production work. Um, there's, you know, if you screens. If you like hundreds of thousands of subscribers, do you get special treatment? Yeah. So the more milestones you hit essentially <laughs> the more days of the month uh the larger the stage oh, that's uh, cool. yeah so it definitely will expand from there well, what is the purpose of that i mean it seems like almost too good to be true you know what i'm saying yeah i honestly i look at youtube spaces as an extension of the platform so on youtube you don't need to have any connections you don't need to know anyone to make it you can you can do that on your own in your bedroom with your iPhone. Mm -hmm. um, and similarly, you know, once you hit these certain milestones on your channel, mm -hmm. you don't need to know anybody to be able to walk into a studio and use these stages for free. Like That's you did that. Cool. And That's can really you cool. go into any of the YouTube spaces if you meet the criteria? Yeah, you can gotcha. unlock any of the spaces. So yeah, 11 around the world. Um, and where we don't have permanent spaces, we do pop-up spaces, mm -hmm. which you're familiar with. We mm -hmm. had you guys at one of our Nashville pop-up spaces. And it's the same idea. We'll take over a local studio or space and convert it, brand it YouTube, and, uh, and use the same kind of idea. So on top of there being, you know, 
stages where people are fil- shooting content. We also will be doing events, um, interviews, uh, networking events. So um, we you, did one. You want to yeah. go, guys, if you, <laughs> if you get a chance. Fun. We, we want to go back and do more. But, but um, they really make um, an outward push to make it work for you from attendance to the kinds of things you learn from to the people that you meet. Um, really? They don't go in for like four hours. They go in for like three days. And it's, it's really... It's, it's fun. It, it, it's really well done. But it was also so thought out and so about you that it wasn't really just about star power and, you know, you were disconnected from it. It's an engaging, interactive thought process that goes into that. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah I appreciate yeah. it. It's yeah. it's a lot of fun and it's amazing to be able to go into different cities mm-hmm. and and bring, you know, YouTube. And if you get a chance, let me give you one other. But the reason I'm saying all this is because it's just so unbelievable. Like if you ever tour, tour the YouTube LA space, and I'm sure some of the other ones, I know people have been in some of the other, couple of the other ones. You don't understand what kind of facility this is. Amazing facility, amazing gear, amazing opportunities, completely set up to be collaborative, various places to shoot from black box stages to bigger stages to lobbies. To It's all set to kind of create. It's true. And something that's unique to it on that note is that in a lot of the stages, there are actually windows. Mm-hmm. And you can, of course, choose to you know close a black curtain and have your privacy to film. But... It's something that's pretty rare for a stage to have windows. And the idea is that when you're at the space, you can see who's filming inside. You can see the channel that's booked it on a screen outside the stage and um, hopefully learn. Or maybe they do something interesting and you want to find out more and you reach out saying, you know, hey, I was at the space and saw you doing X, Y, or Z. And it really just harbors, you know, mm-hmm. facilitates collaboration. Absolutely. From that and, point. and the technology, like these are world class like broadcast centers. This is not, you know, a warehouse where people got second rate gear and put it in. I mean it's a it's it's truly amazing. So with all the changes that are going on, something that's new this year is the YouTube musical app. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, so YouTube music uh, came out earlier this year and it's essentially a YouTube experience curated to music. Mm-hmm. So on top of being able to hear audio, you can actually also see video with the music that you're listening to. You can toggle back and forth if you're you know, not able to watch the video and you're going on a run or you're in your car, you switch to audio. Mm. Um, and it's a really beautiful implementation of, of <laughs> yeah, audio and video, which is unique in this space. Mm-hmm. Um, something that's also cool with it is that they kind of took a new take on offlining and downloads. Mm-hmm. So... You know, typically when you remember to offline something, it's too late. You're mm-hmm. already on the yeah. plane. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. Um, and so one of the things that they focused on was, can we introduce some type of offline mixtape, you know, on an ongoing basis? Oh, so you cool. turn this, you have the option to turn on your offline mixtape, choose how many songs you want it to have, choose how much space it will take. And then on an ongoing basis, it'll update songs based on what you like and also introduce songs that you would will likely enjoy and it's it's always there is there just like a separate building of people just coding <laughs> non-stop creating things it's, it must, it's yeah i mean it's it's unreal it, it is yeah. really unreal so is, is is what is the app is that artist uh the what? app is just youtube music so definitely there's a desktop version and an app and oh, you cool. can just go to any app store and search youtube music and there's you you can use it with ads but you can also do a trial of the the no ad subscription mm. and worth doing either or both. Uh, it's pretty cool. And in, in oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, I've fallen in love with the charts. I love the new charts, yeah. especially the trending chart because it's it, it shows well. you, it uh, kind of gives you an idea of, of where music's going and uh, not much of where it's been, but where it's kind of going. And I think that's an important thing for people that do what I do to kind of stay on top of it. But the charts are really well done. Thank you. Yeah, the, Especially the trending one. The I trending like that, one so. is yeah. definitely one that like stands that one. out. Yeah. Um, I definitely have visions for you know how the charts will evolve more on the on the songwriter side as well. So mm-hmm. things we're thinking about, but the charts you can check out also from our our artist.youtube.com site, which has a lot of other things that you can play around with. So on top of charts and the trending charts, you can also search by specific locations. What, what was that uh, URL again? It's artists.youtube.com. Okay. Uh, and I'm sure if you just search 
YouTube artists into Google, it'll come up as well. So on top of there being charts um, and location-based searching of like what's most popular in LA or Nashville or, or any city, uh, there's also resources specific to musicians. So I think that one of the issues, you know, as you're just getting started with YouTube or even if you already have a channel going is, you know, what should I be asking? Or if you do have a question, where do I find it? There's almost too much out there because oh, on top of YouTube and Google absolutely. creating resources, there's also fans and people that are creating tutorials and there's so much. And this site was built out to really create one hub where you can go that guides you as an artist or a musician. So getting started on YouTube, how copyright works. If you scroll down, there's a, a section that talks about showcasing your discography. So the example we were talking about with James Fauntleroy earlier, Shane McAnally or Evan Kid Bogart, how you get started with that and how you create playlists, show them on your page, how you add collaborators like artists I've produced or in the studio with. So all of that's under showcase your discography on, on this page. And which is artist.youtube.com is yeah. a much cooler way than saying YouTube for dummies. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, but you made an interesting point that I think people don't talk about enough, either on the music side or on the tech side, which is there's a lot to sort out. People don't know where to go necessarily to get the information, and so they kind of get stuck either doing rudimentary things or doing nothing at all or freezing. It can yeah. become overwhelming. So I think unpacking that is just a tool that works mm -hmm. for everybody. And in, in all these platforms, depending on how you and you know how diligent you are about it, there's opportunities in, in a bunch of them to make a living, too, or to make money, correct? Oh, yeah. It's about ads and views, and is, is that... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we, you know, as you grow your subscriber base on YouTube, you, you can become a YouTube partner mm -hmm. um, and ultimately monetize videos that you post on the platform. Um, and then a whole other side of that is, is you know, deals we have in place with our music partners, so mm -hmm. labels, publishers, collections, societies, and so on, um, when anytime their music is being used in a video, mm -hmm. um, ensuring that that's identified mm -hmm. and paid out. Yeah, we've had a because if you don't do it the right way, you that bot will go whoop and shut you down. <laughs> you know, it works. It's happened to us before. Um, uh, so, what excites you about the future? Is it um, more engagement, newer tools? Is it what you don't know what's coming yet? Um, I hope that in the future, it's a lot easier to search for a writer, a producer, and see what they've done. Mm -hmm. That's something that's just missing right now. You know, your only opportunity right now is to search them into Google and hope, search a name, hope that there's a Wikipedia page or all music or discogs, um, none of which really have a whole lot of direct control mm -hmm. by a writer or producer. Mm -hmm. um, and I would love to be able to search this in the future and see what they've done. And then if you don't know a writer or a producer or engineer's name, being able to discover that. So whether through credits, um, whether through charts, making that a lot easier. Mm -hmm. That is what gets me excited about everything I work on. Hmm. So. That'd be a godsend for us because ooh, every week we've got to look up people's credits. And man, it's just so hard. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's, so no, there's so no clear just, way. Yeah. It's so hard. You have no idea. Here's a sword. Follow me. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Are you okay? Because I know searching this week was hard. It's so hard. She, she hasn't written many songs. I know, right? <laughs> you put it in. The <laughs> but that guitar up. part, boy, that guitar part you played on that oh, song, yeah. one song. Because mm -hmm. you're learning guitar. I am learning guitar right Correct. now. Correct. You yep. and your dad, from what I understand? Yeah, it was a... It was a Father's Day present How for us cool to take father-daughter awesome. lessons, and we never stopped. So, well, well speaking <laughs> speaking of that, because you spent some time at Warner Chapel and some time at Disney. What prepared you for the YouTube thing, and how did it get there? Was it just love of music, or? Yeah, I started working at Warner Chapel. I interned there actually during mm -hmm. college uh, a few times. I kept coming back. I loved it, mm -hmm. and um, both at. Warner Chapel and Disney, I was more on the tech side. So I was helping introduce systems for them to do their day-to-day -day jobs, whether it's searching a catalog, making a playlist, pitching music, quotes, licenses, etc. Um, and I was at 
each respective company when they uh, started working with YouTube. Mm. And I think because I was in the tech space, I ended up being the person that worked with YouTube mm. at Warner Chapel and at Disney. So I've worked with YouTube for my entire career, more from the publishing side. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when I joined the YouTube team, that, you know, that's where I'm passionate about. Absolutely. I've always loved working with songwriters. I've always loved knowing who is behind a song that's something that's really it's exciting. Yeah, to me. So, yeah, yeah no, it is love magical. It. And it's tough for her, too, Herb. What's that? It's tough for her, too. Yeah, well, that's, she's over there fixing it now. I know. So maybe you should go over there and help her fix it as well, too. <laughs> well, let, let me... I play guitar. I, I don't think it's necessarily <laughs> fair for us to say we represent all the creative community. We've had... A lot of similar, you know, you've had artists like Justin, who's incredible. He sat in that chair. Erica Enders, obviously James, and, and more and more and more. Crazy. Um, the one thing that's universal, that at least for the folks we know mutually, is they love them some Lindsay. No. I mean, they, yeah. they, they make, once, we, once they find out we know, you, know you and we, and we yeah. have that mutual relationship, and they see how we feel about you. And I, I, I'm saying that not just to make you feel good, but it's as much as why that's important to creative people. Creative people respond to people who understand creative people. Absolutely. It doesn't work with everybody the same way. And a lot of people think they've got that knack, but they don't. That, that comes from True. time and experience. Because it's really a game of trust. Yeah. They have choices, right? And to choose you has to be because the platform makes sense and they trust you. Is that... Fair to say for anybody who would want to aspire to be you? I think that's fair to say. I yeah. appreciate you saying that. Thank well, you. Well, and I think that sometimes the skills that are needed for people, particularly as music and technology marry, which it's now been done for a long time, but as it morphs, is you don't know how to necessarily prepare for a job that is something that there's no book or path or you don't know somebody before, right? And oh, I, yeah. I think that's what excited me most about joining this company mm -hmm. was that, you know, this whole industry is growing in a direction that's new to everybody. Mm -hmm. And we all get to build it together. And we, we all are musicians on the team. We all come from the music industry. We're passionate about the industry and the success of, of music. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's exciting. It's an exciting time to grow together and evolve mm -hmm. the industry. And, and you were also... Uh, a presenter on Pensado Awards for yes. you. You, uh, I remember the long flowing dress, and <laughs> um, and we were proud to say, "Hey, we brought YouTube here." <laughs> yes. That was very cool. Was I really YouTube and Facebook together. I appreciate uh, the opportunity. To no, do that. we, you know, we love you. Um, I love YouTube. <laughs> well, Can't we. Uh, you've been a, a, a friend of Pensado's place. I think the thing that constantly gives us affirmation is when people like yourself and the space that you inhabit tell us about ourselves. It's from the point of whether you like us or not, it's also from analytics and what's going on and how people respond. So it's very helpful to get information from you. We're, we're, glad, that, we're glad that we're on your good side and that it, oh. that it works. No, um, thank you for all that you guys do. I mean, even just creating an award like Pensado's Place, an award show, I mean, that's mm -hmm. that doesn't exist and it's you can tell by your fans and the people in the audience that it's a really special night. Yeah, well, we're gonna we're gonna keep talking about. We'll keep talking. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, we're available for you for whatever you want to do. You know, the live stuff and the other kinds of things. We are hugely fans. Our whole team. So, hopefully, uh, David, you prepare to take us home. Hopefully, this look inside the songwriter and publisher relations side of YouTube has been helpful for you. Because remember, it applies if you're not a songwriter, if you're not a publisher, if you're an engineer, if you're a creative person, if you're working with other people, curate your playlist, use best practice to move forward, use the apps, realize that there's lots of different things out there that can make your job better and, and actually make you some money. So Lindsay, thank you. Thank you, Herb. DP, take us home. Uh, this is a tough one for me. Um, uh, as we've progressed into the streaming world, um, uh, when that first started, Napster and all that sort of stuff, it, it was it was a it was a rocky road, and we didn't know how it was going to end out. And I think now uh, the fog is starting to clear a little bit, and we're getting a clearer picture of how these things are going to pan out. And um, when you meet someone like Lindsay, it puts a face to that process. It's not just a bunch of techies trying to rip us off. It's actually people that care about us and care about our music. So uh, the future looks bright. Things look pretty good. I know that's probably not 
something you want to hear, but it's true. Look at the numbers. We'll yeah. see you next. A bot we'll may see you shut in about that. a minute. <laughs> a bot may shut that down, right? That's the title of a song. Is that clear? <laughs>